So let's go through the wear and tear on my Toyota Tundra after five years and 120,000 miles of ownership. Now I'm cheating a little bit there because I'm 3,000 miles shy of 120,000, but I'm also three miles shy of five years, though I'm not anticipating anything significant. So uh, we're actually at uh, four years, nine months, and we're at 117,000 miles. And based on uh, my upcoming trips, I anticipate that I'll put probably just about another 3,000 miles on between now and then. Um, nothing too strenuous, no long-term trips planned. The significance of my vehicle here is that I do tow uh, quite a bit, most of my miles, and I'm averaging roughly 25,000 miles a year. The last couple years, that's been closer to 30,000, um, and more than 50% of that is towing. Um, I, I tow a travel trailer. Um, I've had three different travel trailers with this vehicle, um, ranging from about 4,000 pound gross vehicle weight to about 7,200 pounds gross vehicle weight. I tow them across country. I tow them in long legs, frequently do a thousand miles a day. I've done a thousand miles back to back days. And I want to show you um, what that's done over the time. So um, to start with, we'll review kind of our, our maintenance that we've done now. I do regular oil changes. Uh, my oil changes are a little bit different than everybody else's. I would do them about 7,500 miles. I do mine with full synthetic. Um, I do them actually, um, uh, what I do with mine is in between trips, I change them. So essentially before I'm leaving for a long trip, I change the oil, usually within about a month or so. So I'm not putting more than typically a thousand miles on before I leave for a long trip. Typically my long trips are anywhere between about five and 6,000 miles. And I'll do that uh, three to four times a year. And then I'll change it when I get back from the trip. So that's how my oil changes end up happening. And, but it works out too. I'm end up changing my oil roughly about every 7,000 miles. So other maintenance that I've done. Well, I had the differential done at 30,000. I did it myself at 30,000, looked at it. It was perfectly clear. I didn't do it again till 90,000. Um, again, perfectly clear. I'm not going to do the next one till 150. So that's relative to the uh, differential change. I did not do the transmission fluid flush myself. I had that done. Um, the transmission fluid flush was done uh, at a local shop that I trust. They did a complete uh, flush and um, that was done, I want to say it was right at about 107,000 miles that we did that. Um, they also, right at that 107,000 miles, did a full tune-up, so that was a little bit of a, a bigger uh, expenditure. But again, I crossed that 100,000 miles there. Vehicle was having no issues whatsoever, no issues with the transmission, no issues with any sort of misfiring or anything like that. We just did it because it was time for the maintenance. At 97,000 miles, I changed the brake pads. I changed them to, I threw the stick around over here, changed them to these uh, beefed up brakes. Um, as you can see right there, uh, they're generally for bigger tires. They're also for people who tow a lot, I tow a lot. I've switched to those. The OEM brakes were fantastic actually. At 97,000 miles when we changed them, um, the front pads still probably had three millimeters of life left in them, um, but we went ahead and changed them anyway again, just because I felt like it was time to do them. As far as the uh, beefed up brakes go, I haven't really noticed any difference at all, not when towing or not towing. The stock pads on these are great, but the beefed up brake pads, what they did um, is they made a little bit of a squeak. I'm not in love with that. It's really just at slow speeds and it's, it's not every time I brake. It's got to do, if I brake a little bit more aggressively, quite honestly, I don't get it. If um, I'm braking a little bit more gently, which I have a tendency to do, I have a tendency to coast and then brake gently, that's when I seem to get most of the squeak. Some videos on my tires. I have uh, Michelin Defender LTX MSs. These are passenger tires. There's a reason I select these tires. People are going to say as much as I tow that um, I would be better off with some LT tires. Um, I've done some videos on that, on why I take the passenger tires. I've been very happy with these. At 30,000, the Bridgestone Duelers that were on there, I, nothing against Bridgestone. I know they do make some quality tires, but the quality tires, the, the quality of the tires that came stock on this vehicle were not good. Um, so at about 30,000, there was significant uneven wear with them. We changed them. I had my first set of Michelins on there then uh, till I think it was 96, 97,000 miles, 66,000 miles and change. Um, and at 66,000 miles and change, they weren't quite worn out. They weren't quite done, but I was gonna be taking another longer trip uh, of about 6,000 miles with my wife and daughter. Um, so I figured I'd change them out. Um, so these have now got um, close to 20,000 miles on them. And boy, 
tread on them still looks fantastic. So I'm going to stay with these Michelins. Uh, super quiet, super low rolling resistance, super durable tire. And as far as uh, my vehicle goes, have worked great. First thing, exterior paint and wear. Well, as I give you the shot of my vehicle from a distance here, and as you look at it, and if we zoom out, it actually looks really good. It looks really good everywhere, unless I get up close to it. And if I get up close, the major thing, let's see if I can point this out for you, is right here, this white line, this scratch. And that's my fault there. Um, it's in a rainstorm. Neighbor's mailbox was propped open. I don't know if it left open. It was really hard. It got open in the storm. I didn't see it. And that sucker got me. And it actually got me there. And by the time I figured it out and pulled away, it got me right there a little bit too. So, but anyway, that's really all I really have of an issue with the body with it um, and the paint. The paint's worn really well. Of course, I travel a lot. So um, there are some dings up here. You can kind of see some little stone scrapes, things that typical if you travel like I do at 70, 75 down the highway that you're going to get. I also in Texas uh, on Highway 90, see if we can spot that one right there, that one big ding. But again, nothing relative to any real significant imperfections or anything like that in the paint itself, nothing where it's wearing away. It all has seemed to do really well. <coughs> Sorry third generation 2022 and 2023 Tundra owner, owners paint on this one really good quality let's move to under the hood here and if we take a look under the hood of course the 5.7 has been fantastic I've had no issues with the 5.7 um, the only issue I've had under the hood is right here stock battery sucked and I replaced it with this uh, x2 power battery from batteries plus if you can see it the uh, only thing that disappointed me was my battery was going. I had to get one. The uh, batteries pluses near me only had a 24F. I wanted to get the 27, um, but the 24 works for this vehicle as well. And um, I've had it for three years now. No issues. The first battery didn't make it three years. This one has been fantastic. And of course, like I said, I tow, I tow long distance. This battery comes with a uh, five-year warranty so it's got a couple years left in it but no issues with it the other thing uh, no issues um, if you look down in here uh, no cam tower leaks I know it's been an issue not been my issue fortunately well let's take a look here underneath no issues with rust as you can see this is uh, uh, what it looks like it's a little dirty a little dusty um, the car wash doesn't do the underneath, not really worried about that. Um, up there, that's water, that's not uh, oil or my shocks leaking or anything like that. Um, around the leaves there, uh, from, um, but uh, no significant rust anywhere. Again, I've been in snow a couple times, um, haven't really been where we've salted the road with this. Uh, fortunately, I have been uh, to the ocean with it a couple times and been on the beach with it a few times for a few days, but nothing that's ever really become uh, a problem relative to um, any sort of significant rust here. Similarly, as we look here, um, you know, I've seen videos of the domestics with quite a bit of rust on them. Really, nothing to speak of underneath of this vehicle. It's really done quite well. Um, as far as that's concerned, and I've been very content with it relative to that. Let's talk about interior wear. Well, if we look at the interior here in the back seat, the back seat doesn't have a whole lot of passengers on a regular basis every now and then. Um, does have my dogs in here every now and then when we travel. When we travel with the dogs, um, we do put a liner down that keeps them directly off the seat, and that seems to help uh, quite a bit. So no real significant changes back there. Of course, most of the wear and tear is going to be here in the front um, where the driver sits. And, you know, the most I've seen some things on the new Tundra where the plastic down here has cracked uh, for a few people. Pretty uh, embarrassing, actually, that Toyota would make, pretty embarrassing for Toyota, that they would make something that week that it cracks. You hear people talk about the seats. Well, um, this, this no cracking here, you can see. And I, I've seen where people have taken some criticism, people telling them they're not getting into their truck right, which I think is hilarious. Well, I, I definitely slide the 210 pounds of my body across my seat, but that's about as much wear as it's got right there. If I zoom out, you can see that side there. 
here's the slide across side, if you will. You can see there's a little wear along the seam here um, where it's a little bit discolored. You can certainly see the cracking. Um, but other than that, um, nothing significant to speak of here. Um, it's really uh, seats, the leather has held up fantastic. And this is really a high quality leather in this one. In the new ones, I don't think you're getting high quality leather in those 2022s till you get to a capstone. I think I may be wrong about that, um, but I think it's soft uh all the way up through the 1794 and the platinum. One of the decisions for me to get the platinum in 2018 versus the 1794 was that I didn't like the suede here. Um, it was a t I like the tan leather, that, or really it's kind of an orange leather that they put in the 1794s then, but they had this suede portion of it. Um, that I didn't really like. I looked at a couple of them that people had had that seemed to get dirty real easy. This has held up really well. What's uh, not held up so well, there are a few other things. Um, one of them is the, you know, this plastic. This plastic, let's face it, this is cheap plastic. You see over here where I reach for the door and see all the, you know, where I reach for the door handle, all the scuffs on it. And I don't think that's from me, actually. I think that might be from my wife hitting it with her rings then the hand, small handful of times she's taken it. But does that, <clears throat> if we look down here by where, you know, by where my feet are, you can see the scrapes. Really, if you look at this plastic too cross, it'll, it'll scratch on you. It's just that fragile. It just, um, but overall, the interior looks really good. And like I said, if I zoom in on some of those scratches in the plastic, you can see them. But other than that, this is a truck that's had, you know, close to 120,000 miles on it now. And, you know, you look at the seat over there, minimal uh, creases in it where the passenger seat is. That's not as occupied as this one. And typically when it is, it's uh, by my wife and, and she's about 60, 70 pounds less than I am. So puts a lot less strain on it over there. Now I'm going to see if I can show you one of the things that's bothered me the most with this vehicle. See if you can hear this when I go ahead and open it up. Hear that? i show it to you. If you look right there at that hinge, that's that hinge popping right there. And so this, I assume the bearing that's inside here is kind of worn out. The only thing you can really do is you can kind of see it sliding back and forth. Shoot, it's been doing that for probably the last 25,000 miles. Um, I think I looked this up. I think it's about 40 bucks to replace that. So that's a bit of a nuisance. You know, that's a, yeah, you can hear it there. Don't really like that. Have to get that one addressed. The other thing that's bothered me. So one of the things I really like about the Platinum, and the reason I won't necessarily go, is you see um, the seat bolster here. I typically ride with that all the way under my leg, especially since I do long distance. Now, what you can see right now is this dark leather goes all the way down and meets this trim here. However, there's a clip and then that clips out the yellow foam that you see right here. And it's come out twice now. I put it back, it seems to stay back for uh, quite some time. So I put it back once, probably 40,000 miles ago. Notice the other day it was out again. It's a bit of a job to get that thing back in there um, and when it's not in what happens is like I said that this leather kind of slides up and you can see that foam I just don't like that um, but goes back it does go back in and now it covers up the foam again appropriately but it's something that again you know is a nuisance hey it's not as big of a deal on the new Tundra <clears throat> where all this plastic is cracking right here that's you know much more obnoxious in my opinion you know so that's really it. That's the problems that I've had with this truck. Um, <laughs> if you want to call those problems, they're just dislikes. Um, you can see down here on this side as well, if I zoom in on it, you can see the scratches in the door panel there, just above it. And these things, and maybe down there, right the pillar there. Um, so that's about it. Other than that, it's held up tremendously well. One of the things I don't understand about the new Tundra is all these little cheap things that seem to be going on that are annoying people. My truck just feels so solid. Everything feels so good. You know, the knobs, the buttons, everything up there just feels incredibly solid. And, you know, there were some aesthetic things I didn't like about it. I thought it was interesting as this model was going out. Everybody talked about how dated it looked, etc., as you look at it here, I don't think it really looks bad. Now, of course, I've changed some cosmetic things, but 
um, you know, covered up some of the chrome here with some plastic parts that you can do, covered up some of the chrome and silver down here, you know, give it a slightly more modern look. Certainly I've changed out. This is an aftermarket head unit. Um, but really those were, that's more of a functional than an aesthetic thing. Um, but as you look at it, I really don't think it looks bad. I don't know why everybody felt like this looks so outdated. Um, I really enjoy it. I get in the new ones and I think it looks like something that wasn't put together really well, like the engineering on it wasn't that great. But we've all got our own opinions on those things. That's it. That's after about 100 and just shy of 120,000 miles, um, 117,000. And I can tell you when I did the math on it, 70,000 of those miles were towing across country. Um, so I'm a lot of tow miles here and I do those, like I said, in really long legs, put a lot of stress on this vehicle and it just seems to respond to it really well. So, um, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, you know, I hope it, um, uh, uh, answered some questions for you. If you were interested in a half ton pickup and you're looking in the used market, this half ton Trunda, if you're thinking about towing, it just performs so well.